said uh, to him and uh, comment uh, Fausta. Comment Vijayalakshmi, thank you very much for uh, giving uh, an introduction uh, of monosity and uh, what is the importance of discussing and uh, study the monosity today that is already presented uh, by our comrades. Now, uh, firstly, I will think that uh, although Khamed uh, has said that I have studied that uh, monosriti and the uh, Brahministic literature, including that uh, Vedas and uh, other things, <coughs> but uh, uh, the actual fact is that uh, Brahministic literature is a very huge one. And Khamed uh, 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 Twin has said this also, that uh, probably this is the first time an organization which is working in custom relation field and uh, cultural field, uh, probably this is the first time has taken up uh, the study of Manusriti. So this is the uh, situation where actually uh, in the past a thorough discussion on Brahministic literature including Manusriti and uh, Vedas and uh, other uh, books, including uh, Gita, etc. So, uh, this is not done properly. However, the uh, whole literature is so huge that it is not a job of a particular person also. This is a collective work. The work uh, we have started, but it is ultimate uh, claim that uh, I have gone through uh, the whole uh, Brahministic literature it is a collective work and uh, Comrade, you have a mic. Comrade, Sankar, you have a mic. Mic. It's full of you. So, definitely, uh, 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 a collective effort is required to take up the study, the whole Brahministic literature. And to understand what to, uh, today the fascistic forces, the Saffron corporate fascistic forces, what they are actually trying to do and how they are going to, uh, to implement their fascistic program in Indian context, that is not a new thing also. Uh, you know that uh, for uh, many uh, hundred years or thousand years, for last uh, uh, Vedas was written or composed rather, uh, around 1500 uh, BC. It was started to compose in 1500 BC and uh, it continued uh, to, uh, to be composed up to 1000 uh, BC or uh, uh, 800 BC. So through this long time, <coughs> the Vedas were composed and then the uh, 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 Sriti books uh, started to uh, appear and other Brahministic literature uh, came in the same. So, uh, this thing, uh, they, are, they are implementing their type of uh, uh, ruling. Uh, today we, are, we call it fascist uh, rule. But at the time of Sankarasariya, that is uh, also uh, another type of attack on the whole uh, uh, spectrum of uh, uh, opposing force or struggling force or progressive force. So that is also one type of uh, very uh, radius attack on uh, on the progressive forces. So this is their uh, their culture. This is their uh, rule. They uh, they are doing this thing for several uh, thousand years. So uh, we need to understand that because there is a continuity. What they are doing this. Uh, BJP or RSS, they have a very strong root in Indian society. This root is uh, Ved and Vedanta, especially the Vedanta. And this Vedic culture and Vedantic culture, especially the later Vedantic culture, and uh, which was later uh, led by Gaurapada and then uh, his disciple Sankara, and uh, then uh, today uh, via uh, Vivekananda, uh, etc. So this is uh, this has a very strong root in Indian society and and uh, and uh, history and a continuation. If we do not understand their continuation, we will not be able to understand their actual character. So that is why Manusriti now it is uh, it has come 
in the discussion because uh, several BJP and RSS leaders they are saying that uh, that is their agenda correct to the state that in the organizer if this uh, writer came uh, in 1947 that they want to manage city in the place of a uh, uh, constitution so today also they are trying to uh, replace the existing constitution uh, <coughs> by monocity you see that uh, Manu Sriti sometimes is called Manu Sanghita. But Manu, Manu Sriti is not Manu Sanghita. Sanghita is, uh, is meant for the Vedas. But to give the equal status of Vedas, Manu Sriti sometimes uh, uh, is called as Manu Sanghita. But this is, Manu Sanghita is a different kind of literature. And, and the Sanghita, that, that means the Vedas, uh, those are a different kind of literature. Vedas, Vedas are considered as sacred uh, books uh, which uh, mainly uh, deal the uh, religion. So this is a belief, although it is not true, because uh, Vedas uh, are something else, which uh, we may discuss in future, that what actually Vedas are. But, uh, but as far as the uh, common wisdom or conventional wisdom, Vedas are sacred texts which deal religion. And Sriti, Sriti books are different. That is a law book. They are, uh, all, all Sriti books, including Manu Sriti, they uh, claim uh, full conformity with the Vedas. But they are a different kind of literature, which is a, 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 a law book, which are uh, going to establish a uh, detailed uh, penal system. Uh, and in this uh, Manu uh, Sriti, uh, the, uh, the book is a vast one, huge one, and total there are uh, 2,684 verses. So you understand that this 2,684 verses covering the all aspects of our uh, life, socio-cultural life, economic life, everything of our life uh, has come under this 2684 verses. That you uh, do this thing, you do not do this thing, you can do this thing, you cannot do this thing. If you do this, then you will be punished. And uh, what will be the punishment? That is also uh, jotted down. That is uh, actually city books and Manu city was... Uh, uh, there and uh, it is said that this Manu Sriti was uh, written uh, by Manu and who is a Manu? Manu is the first man. Manu is the first man from uh, he only the human race was started. That is why he, he is a progenitor of the uh, human race. So this is uh, Manu. This is uh, this is said by the Brahministic scholars. But the thing is that this is not true, we understand, that this is not true. Uh, the first man uh, may be a, uh, maybe a not a human. A first human is not, uh, maybe not a human. He is a half human and a half uh, ape. So, uh, Monu, you know, the, actually who is Monu? Here, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, research uh, on that uh, thing. And uh, uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar, he did a magnificent thing. He has a uh, good uh, book, a very magnificent book uh, he wrote, that is the revolution and counter-revolution in ancient India. And in this book, Baba Sahib Ambedkar said, that is Manu, uh, he is practically, actually uh, came from the Vigu family. And uh, in every pages of the Manu city, there is signed by Vigu. But Vigu is a family name. Vigu is a family man. So, uh, what is the name of the author? That was also pointed out by Baba Sahib Ambedkar in the same book. That is uh, in Narva's Sriti. That is another Sriti book. Uh, there are many uh, Sriti books. Narva's Sriti is another Sriti book where it is uh, said, it is uh, said very clearly that the uh, <coughs> writer of Manu Sriti is uh, uh, Sumati Bhargava. This Sumati Bhargava came from the Vigu family. And this Vigu family also uh, uh, had a long history in the uh, in the Vedas. 
several times this uh, Vibhu, Vibhu Bishamitra, you know that is uh, very well, that is uh, in uh, Vedas, some uh, priest families who took part in the war. So uh, Bishamitra, Vasisht and uh, this uh, Vibhu, they are there. So, so this Vibhu family, they are involved to write down the Manusriti and the name of the writer is Sumati Bhargava. And this Sumati Bhargava is a close associate of Pushamitta Sunga. So uh, now we will discuss who is Pushamitta Sunga and uh, what he did. But to understand the time of Manusriti, it is important. The father's orders who uh, <coughs> uh, did a lot of research on uh, Indian uh, ancient texts, uh, including Manusriti, and these foreign uh, uh, scholars, they came, on, came to an understanding. There are a lot of debates with this uh, time of Manusriti. There are a lot of debates, but uh, all debates, uh, you can sum up that the Manusriti is uh, probably, uh, it was written uh, <coughs> in between 200 uh, BCE to 200 CE. Within this 400 years, it sometime in this 400 years, Manusriti was written from 200 uh, BCE to 200 CE. So this thing uh, can be said depending on the foreign researchers uh, who did research on the Manusriti. But Ambedkar, he said very clearly, he quoted from the Nalva city and from the um, uh, evidences of Nalva city, he said that uh, the writer of Nalva city is uh, Sumati Bhargava. He came from, uh, from the Vili family and Sumati Bhargava was a close associate with uh, Pushyamita Sungo. Although no other historians in our uh, uh, country, uh, like there are a lot of uh, progressive uh, historians who are having, Ramila uh, Thapar and other, but uh, no one supported uh, this, although, but uh, 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 Ambedkar was very firmly and very strongly put forward this uh, point, and when we quoted or uh, cited uh, the evidence from the Nawala city, then, uh, and, uh, and the connection between Dhrigu family and the Pusamitya Sumbo family, Sumbo family, Sumbo family also had a uh, antiquity and uh, had a good relation, uh, interrelated uh, families with the Dhrigu, and this Dhrigu family, Sumbo family, uh, uh, this history uh, give up, gives us impression that it may be right. Uh, Ambedkar uh, might be right uh, when he said that uh, Pushyamitra Sunga was directly involved in uh, writing Manusriti and the Sumati Bhargava wrote Manusriti and both of uh, them are con contemporary. So this is the uh, Ambedkar's take. Uh, <laughs> To understand this point, we, well, we have to uh, understand the background of Moro city. Uh, when, when the Aryans started to come uh, in India, they, uh, what they did, they, are, uh, the, uh, they started a civilization which is called Vedic civilization. And this Vedic civilization, we know that the Vedic people, the uh, Aryan people, they were basically pastoral people, they did not know agriculture. But uh, uh, bef uh, 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 before uh, uh, Vedic culture, there was another culture in our uh, country. Uh, country means that is not uh, today's country, that is the entire uh, subcontinent, you know. In this subcontinent, there was another uh, civilization. Jo, uh, that civilization, uh, 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 that is uh, Harappa, uh, uh, Manjadaro, and there are a lot of centers of 
about this uh, civilization. Today, more and more centers are discovered uh, from Afghanistan to Gujarat. There is a huge uh, uh, geographical span is very huge, and in this uh, area there is another civilization, uh, the Harappan Harappan civilization, which is generally called, and this Harappan civilization was based on agriculture. And uh, when Aryans came, they started a new uh, civilization. Uh, this civilization gradually uh, developed uh, to uh, from a pastoral society to an uh, agriculturalist society, and uh, gradually this agriculturalist society uh, developed surplus, the surplus wealth. Uh, initially, there was no surplus wealth, so there was a very strong communistic feeling within the uh, Aryan. Yes, or Aryan. Uh, it is not a race. The Aryan people. We, uh, it is better to call Aryan people. In the Aryan people, uh, you know that is a very strong communistic uh, sentiment and communistic concept because there was no surplus. When the surplus started to appear, uh, when the society uh, was, uh, started to divide uh, into groups uh, or classes, and uh, this uh, uh, started especially when. Iron was discovered in 800 BC. So, from this 800 BC to 200 BC, so 200 BC, uh, if we uh, accept Ambedkar's state that uh, around uh, Pushyabindu Sundu, Pushyabindu Sundu came in the power in 183 BC. So, in 183 BC, when Pushyabindu Sundu came in the power and uh, 200 BC, if we uh, safely take that uh, uh, manuscript was written. So from 800 BC, when iron was discovered and uh, agriculture took a very sharp uh, turn and a huge surplus was uh, uh, formed. And from this time to this time, 800 uh, BC to 200 BC, there was a time gap of 600 years. In this 600 years, that is a very special time in uh, India at that time. India means at that time, India is a very special time, and it's a transitional uh, time from a communistic uh, type of uh, society to a strongly class divided society. Uh, if if there is a transition between these two, this is the time. This in this time span from 800 BC to 200 BC. In this period, we will see lot of changes. a uh, lot of changes uh, are taking place first there are urbanization was started when the surplus was uh, started uh, to appear in the scene then there is a ruling class also they uh, was formed previously there was a, in vedic society the aryan people had organization called sabha and samiti this was uh, this uh, sabha and samiti were Uh, can be you can be call, you can call it a political uh, institution uh, in loose term loosely uh, political institution sabha and samiti but when this uh, uh, surplus started to appear in the scene society is started to break in the uh, classes ruling class started to appear then this sabha and samiti was broken and then in the in place of this sabha and samiti the new type of organization political organization start to come that is state and uh, uh, when the state is uh, uh, is coming uh, it, uh, is is formed then the uh, organization it is called the second organization in indian society first organization was at the time of harappan culture and the second organization it is called in indian history when the ruling uh, class shifted from village to town organization is started this is the first uh, new thing new thing in vedic society second thing is that that script the vedic people or aryan people they did not have any script uh, in their language whatever they compose they compose uh, through uh, words they memorize it whole uh, literature they used to uh, <coughs> keep in memory and generation after generation they uh, keep it in the memory so this was the very unique feature of a uh, very uh, society and aryan culture and in this period in this uh, transitional period which i said that is from 600 800 bc to 200 bc in this transitional period one new thing has come that is organization second new thing has come that is the script was introduced at the time of 
Africa. First uh, evidence of uh, writing in Vedic society we get from the rock uh, edicts of uh, Asoka. So this was uh, script was uh, introduced. So this is the uh, uh, second thing. Large scale trade, huge trade. Large scale trade means you know that uh, foreign trade, international trade, and uh, there was a very uh, famous disciple of uh, Buddha who uh, whose name was uh, Anath Pindaka. This Anath Pindaka actual name is uh, Sudatta, and Sudatta was a uh, uh, trader, international trader, and it is said that uh, at that time all the known places in the world had a branch of Sudatta's. Uh, a company. Uh, so uh, he had a trading relation uh, with uh, a large section of, of the globe at that time known places and where trade relations were there. So a large scale trade uh, developed at that time. Uh, the economy was uh, flourishing and all these type of things was uh, developed. And this development there was uh, due to uh, another thing ideologically all this development uh, ideologically got a uh, boost up by uh, Buddhism. Uh, not Buddhism uh, only. Buddhism is a branch of a larger uh, uh, school. This school is a Shamanic uh, school. One side there is a Brahmanic uh, ideology, Brahmanic uh, schooling, Brahmanic, Brahmanic thought. Another side was that this was an antithesis of uh, Brahmanism, that was a Shramanic culture, Shramanism. This Shramanism, you know, Jain philosophy or Jain cult or Jain uh, sect, Buddhist sect, different type of Ajivox sect, including, there are a lot of names, uh, you uh, may have heard the name of uh, Sanjay Bellataputra, Ajit S. Kamali, all these are, uh, were the sect of Ajivok sect and came under the umbrella of Shamanism. This Shamanism or Shamanic cultures, uh, this Shamanic culture is a, there is a term, uh, it came from a term called Shom. Shom means labor. It is directly connected with the labor in Bhutu. This Shamanic culture, Shamanic philosophy, Shamanic ideas, they are directly related and connected with the toiling masses of the society. That is why the name Shram or labor is associated with this uh, uh, school. And uh, Brahmanism, on the other hand, it is uh, connected uh, with the name of Brahma. And this uh, Brahma was a concept. The concept is that the uh, world is created by a uh, uh, supernatural uh, thing, so a supernatural idea, which uh, may, you may conceive it like uh, today a uh, god or something like that. But at that time it was called Brahma. And from this Brahma, the Brahmanism and, uh, uh, and the other people, uh, you know, they used to call them Brahmanas. So that was their idea. If you go through Rig Veda, then you will see that the whole universe was started from uh, some idea. This idea was called in, sometimes it was called uh, Hiranagarva, hmm? the golden Rao, uh, Hiranagarva. Sometimes it is called Pujapati. And later it was uh, said Brahma. So from this Brahma, this term came, Brahman, Brahmanism, and the Aryan people, especially the Vedic people, who composed Vedas, because all Aryans, they, they uh, did not compose Vedas. A particular portion, a particular portion of the Aryan race, uh, which uh, Aryan race means Aryan people, uh, they were basically called themselves at uh, Trishu Bharata clan. This Trishu Bharata clan called themselves Brahmanas. This Brahmanas came from the town Brahma. This Brahma means that is the supernatural creator of the universe, Brahma. Therefore, this Brahma, uh, Brahmanism, the idea came. And this Brahmanism was based on uh, male chauvinist idea. Whole Vedas is uh, uh, based on the male chauvinist idea. Male chauvinism, uh, idealism, and the uh, uh, ruling class. That is Brahmanism. And the opposite. If this is thesis, then the antithesis is Shamanism. In this Shamanism, the idea is connected with the term Shram, means the labor and the toiling people and their aspiration, their culture, their uh, everything is related with Shamanism. The whole Aryavarta, whole 
Aryavarta was divided into two uh, <coughs> dominant forces. That is, one uh, side there is uh, Brahminist forces, and another side there is the Shamanist forces led by the Gautam Buddha. So this was the situation at that time.